It's an honor to be with you. It was after leaving uh, the military for four years um, that I became a Catholic priest. And after being ordained, I went to Bolivia to serve the poor who became my teachers. It was in Bolivia that I began to realize that the greatest enemy in my country, the United States, is ignorance. Uh, there's so much that we don't know about other cultures, uh, other people's histories, and of course our country's foreign policy. The people of Bolivia, the poor and the oppressed of that country, began to educate me. It saddened me to see my country there supporting a brutal dictator, General Hugo Bonzer, one of the many dictators that we were supporting at this time. It was in my fifth year that I was arrested. We were visiting political prisoners in Bolivia. There were many documented cases of torture. I was arrested in my fifth year and expelled from the country and became very involved in El Salvador, a country far worse than the one I came from. Uh, it was in El Salvador that we found, once again, our country at work, the United States giving guns, training to those who were at war with their people. I've never seen such brutality uh, as I saw in El Salvador. There were many massacres, many killed. November the 16th, 1989, six Jesuit priests, their two women co-workers, were massacred. A U.S. Congressional Task Force went to El Salvador to investigate and returned, reporting that those responsible for this massacre were trained at the U.S. Army School of the Americas at Fort Benning, Georgia. It was then that I went to Georgia with the support of my religious community, the Marinol Order, and with others started to investigate this school. I moved into a small apartment right outside of the main gate of Fort Benning where I continued to to live and monitor this school. Some of the basics of what we've learned, uh, over 60,000 soldiers from 18 countries in Latin America have been trained here. They come from these countries to learn commando operations, psychological warfare, counterinsurgency. What we learned, of course, was that the insurgents were the poor, human rights leaders, labor leaders, as in Colombia, where most of the soldiers are coming from today. They have been the targets of those who have learned their lessons at this school. In 1996, the Washington Post front page revealed that at the school uh, were these manuals that advocated torture. U.S. instructed Latins on execution and torture, the front page of the Washington Post reported, and then when the United Nations Truth Commission report on El Salvador documented that those who assassinated Bishop Oscar Romero in El Salvador, those Salvadoran soldiers who raped and killed four U.S. church women in El Salvador, two of them of the Marino community who were friends, <clears throat> uh, they were trained at the School of the Americas, along with those who massacred, of course, the Jesuits and the two women, and the list went on and on. Word about the school down at Fort Benning, the School of the Americas, began to spread throughout the country. It was being financed by the U.S. taxpayers. It was being done in our name. And we began to gather at the main gate each November to try to keep alive the memory of the victims, to try to speak for those whose voices have been silenced, taken away. That first November when we gathered, we had a small group there, uh, about a dozen. The next year, 100 came, and then 500, and then 1,000 the following year. I'm happy to report that this last November, over 19,000 gathered at the main gate of Fort Benning. And we were there to try to express our solidarity as North Americans with sisters and brothers of Latin America who are the victims of this school down at Fort Benning, now called the Western Hemisphere Institute for Security Cooperation. Because our movement got to such uh, large numbers, because of editorials appearing in major newspapers like the New York Times, School of Dictators, the Washington Post, the School of Scandal, the Los Angeles Times buried this relic and many other major newspapers calling for its closure. The school changed its name, but not its tactics. They say to us now that they're teaching democracy at this school. Um, we say you do not teach democracy 
behind the barrel of a gun. You do not teach democracy behind this chain link fence with signs that say no trespassing. What's going on here is that the thousands of soldiers trained here every year they return to these countries in Latin America and they provide the muscle for U.S. foreign policy. They protect the economic interest of the large corporations. These soldiers are none other than the watchdogs to protect the economic interest of these economic giants. And we want this school shut down. This is what we're about. I want to say that our movement is rooted in nonviolence. Early on, as the movement began to grow, we drew on the wisdom and the experience of Mahatma Gandhi, Dr. Martin Luther King, Rosa Parks, Cesar Chavez, and others. Their way, the way of nonviolence, was going to be our way to shut down what's known in Latin America as a school of assassins. And that's what we're about. Over 19,000 who gathered there last November, uh, we're there to shut down the school. Over half who gathered were college and university students, high school students, lots of nuns, military veterans, lots of senior citizens, parents with their children, and others. I can only say that we're not going away. We're going to keep our hands on the plow, on the, on the plow here until this school of assassins is shut down. Just months ago, we received from the FBI and their counterterrorism division the request that the ACLU filed for us. And I must say I was not shocked to know that our country, that my country, the United States, had been spying on us, doing surveillance on our organization, along with other grassroots organizations who are in solidarity with the poor. They have been spying on us for years. And I would just want to say I think it's a disgrace. This is an outrage. This is a scandal. But what I've come to realize is that my country any person or organization who would dare to critique, to criticize U.S. foreign policy, we become suspect. We are seen as the subversive, as in Latin America, el enemigo. Any person or organization who dares to walk in solidarity with the poor to try to be a voice for the voiceless are seen as suspect, as subversive. And I want to just say I think it's a scandal and this is only the tip of the iceberg, these 50 pages that we have received from the FBI. Let me just say in, in um, a quote from this, this document. Um, the FBI is saying in their document on page 20, the event has grown dramatically during the past several years, attracting college students and others sympathetic to the issue. The primary issue of the protest is the funding and training by the Department of Defense and the Department of, Department of State of Latin American military officers at the Fort Benning, Georgia military installation. This event draws protesters who object to the human rights violations conducted in these countries. The leaders of the SOA Watch have taken strides to impart upon the protest participants that the protest should be a peaceful event. This year's protest was peaceful as it has, it, has, it has been over the past years. This is from the report. And again, we ask, what are they doing spying, doing surveillance on our organization? Uh, why aren't they spending their resources and personnel and time and money investigating the crimes of the hundreds and hundreds of graduates who have been trained at this school? And I am here representing our movement with the hope that this school and through your efforts that this school can be shut down. We believe that this school should not exist, nor any school that promotes violence and torture should not exist. Thank you.